We've noticed something lately, and that is a lot of people, and I do mean a lot of people, are leaving full-time RV living. And after five years of us living the RV life, both on a full-time and a part-time basis, I can tell you, you're probably gonna see more RVers come off of the road. And we're kind of predicting a shakeup in the RV industry, which has actually really already begun. We're gonna break down exactly why that is and what's to come in this video. So if you're new here, my name is Charity, and for the last five years, my family and I have been traveling the US in our RV. On this channel, we share tips and tricks, storage hacks, organization, some of our fails, great places to stay, travel, and some great food along the way. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get notified each time that we release a new video. Now, in just the past few weeks and months, we've seen more and more of our friends in the RV community calling it quits on full-time RV. RV life. So why are so many people coming off of the road and leaving full-time RV life? Well, the short answer is living and traveling in an RV for most people isn't a viable long-term living situation. We're not talking about those that are living in an RV as a last resort to homelessness or people that are, you know, in an RV because they don't have any other options for affordable living. That's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about people that came out of a sticks and bricks environment and into the RV life lifestyle to be able to explore, have freedom, and be able to just live a different lifestyle on their own terms and see so much of this great country. So something that's important to realize, most of your full-time RVers aren't really full-timing as a permanent situation. The average is about two to three years and it's a phase or a season or really whatever you wanna call it. People jump into this lifestyle to be able to explore, but things change and needs change. And especially if you have kids, I mean, our kids have changed so much in their size. I mean, they're just, they're bigger than what they used to be. They eat more than they used to. and their needs have changed as they get older. Now, I mean, if we had to do this all over again, we would have jumped into this lifestyle when our kids were much younger and much smaller because their needs then are way less complex than they are now as teenagers and, and preteens. And then we've seen people too where then needs change when grandkids come along. So maybe they've been out traveling and now there's grandkids that are there and they wanna be closer and more available for family and to spend time with their grandkids. Now, we have seen some of our viewers that are fortunate enough to be able to have that situation where they have a family member and they can just mooch dock, which would mean they park their RV on that family person's land. But RVs really, are not built to be lived in for decades. They're gonna break a lot. And I do mean a lot, especially the more that you live in it and the more that you're moving things and the more that you're bringing slides in and out to pack up and travel to the next destination and go down the highway. And it's like this small earthquake that happens. And it's especially if you travel like I-10 in Louisiana or something like that, things are going to break. And RV living, when you're traveling from place to place, it's not cheaper. You've got fuel, you've got campground costs. Even if you have a campground membership, for those of you that don't know, we are really what we would call anytime RV. Pretty much what we have with our RV situation is we RV when we want to be RVing and when we need a break, we come back to our vacation rental. We have a spot to be able to kind of park it for a little bit, call this home for a little bit and regroup and then go back out and travel again. And so we do have a mortgage payment on the vacation rental that we have. So I was comparing notes with another full-time family that does not have a mortgage payment. And interestingly enough, our monthly budgets were about the same because by the time that they paid for fuel and by the time that they paid for campgrounds and miscellaneous repairs and things that you just need more often when you're traveling more often, it was very interesting to see that our monthly budget was very, very much the same number, <laughs> even though we have a mortgage that's involved. Just interesting phenomenon that really goes to show you the RV life when you're traveling isn't really necessarily cheaper than a sticks and bricks life. Here's another phenomenon and another reason why for most people that jump into this lifestyle on a full-time basis, don't really do this for decades on end. And that is after a while, after you've been out traveling for a while, things really do start to feel a little bit of the same. So once you've checked off some of these, what we call big rocks on your travel bucket list, maybe you've been to the Grand Canyon or you've 
been to Glacier National Park or you've visited the PNW, you've visited New England, you've visited the areas you really want to visit, you kind of find that you're ready for a break <laughs> from all of the complications that full-time RV life brings. I mean, you've got things like breakdowns. We've had that happen to us multiple times. When those breakdowns occur, you have things like parts availability. We've actually been stuck for multiple days just because the parts weren't available right then and there. They had to be ordered in and FedEx and all of those things. Getting packages on the road is more complicated than when you are stationary. And all of this just becomes a way of life. It's just the way that things are. And it's just not as fun anymore when you're two, three, four, five years into this lifestyle. The other thing to think about is you really have no control over your neighbors, right? So you maybe have a thousand trails membership. You need to stay there for two weeks. You come in and the neighbors that are in the site next to you might just not be as kind and considerate as you are of the situation and the fact that you're pretty close to your neighbors. And all of this after a while just starts to compound and it's just not as fun as it was when you first got started. Now, I am super excited to take a quick minute to tell you about this product that I have fallen in love with for RV living, and that is these laundry sheets from Earth Breeze, which is the sponsor of today's video. Now, what I love about Earth Breeze is it's laundry soap in a sheet format that you can actually tear in half, which makes it easier to use for our smaller washer dryer unit in the RV. Now I have been using laundry pods, which is actually really more soap than what we need because our washer dryer does do smaller loads. And yes, I could have probably gotten some liquid laundry detergent that comes in jugs, but that takes a ton of space in the RV. And finally recycling at an RV campground can be hard to do, which is another reason that I love using the Earth Breeze because the packaging takes up way less space than my laundry pods did and it's biodegradable cardboard which I can just rip up and throw away without any negative environmental impact since it'll break down. Now the sheets dissolve 100% in water because it's soap in a sheet form and you can get the sheets shipped to you for free and they have an easy subscription option as well. For a limited time, you can save 40% when you go to earthbreeze.com forward slash grateful glamper to get started with 40% off. That's earthbreeze.com forward slash grateful glamper to save 40% off on your subscription. Now back to the video. And then the other thing that we have noticed that with a lot of full-time RVers is so you get to this place, you've, you're two, three years in, you've hit the big rocks, you wanna maybe go do something different. You want to take a flight to Hawaii. You want to go on a cruise. You want to fly maybe somewhere else across the pond over into Europe. Now you're having to worry about where are you gonna park your RV? Will the RV be okay while you're gone? What if power goes out at the campground while you're away and you've got food in the fridge or just the complications go on and on and on when you're trying to figure out a place to just leave your RV. And when you're in the sticks and bricks, you really don't kind of have that thought of like, is my house gonna be okay while I'm away? Like it's a house, you usually have neighbors. I mean, there's not as much of a complication <laughs> when you wanna take a flight somewhere when you're in a sticks and bricks type of environment. We've seen that most people end up doing is people either end up purchasing land where they can park their RV on their land and still have kind of somewhat of a home base or maybe even build something like a barn dominium where they can park the RV in the barn dominium, maybe have a living quarters in the barn dominium, or if they're living in their RV, it's out of the elements or getting back into a sticks and bricks type of environment and either finding a place where they can store the RV, keep it on site, or sometimes selling the RV if that particular RV isn't really what they want to continue to use to travel. Now, what we have seen is most of these people that come off of the road, in many cases, they're still RVers. They are not giving up on the RV lifestyle. They're just not doing it on a full-time basis anymore. Now, there's a really interesting silver lining that I want to talk about a little bit later on this video and what all of it means. Suffice it to say, life is a series of seasons and we've all gone through different seasons in our life. You have a season of when you're a child, you have a season maybe of when you get married, you have a season of maybe when life changes and, and things just go a different direction. You've got a season of raising children, of kids leaving home, all of these seasons, right? And RV life is another season for many people and that full-time season does tend to come to a close for the majority of those that are full-timing. Some RVers that you probably actually know or maybe even have followed before that are not full-time anymore are RVers like No Ordinary Path, Family of Nomads, 
changing lanes. Our life we build, which used to go by Oil's Grace Tribe. Lanes less traveled, RV love, Loftus party of six, RV odd couple, the OG RV lifestyle. <laughs> the list is gonna keep going on and on because the bottom line is this. Full-time RV living is just usually not a long-term solution. RVs aren't built the same. They're not meant to last as a full-time dwelling for decades and decades to come. Now, let's talk a little bit about the shakeup that is coming to the RV industry and why that things are the way they are. Now, COVID changed life as we know it, and many people during COVID reevaluated what they were doing and where they were living, and it was really just a wake-up call for most of the world, and us included. And as a result, the RV industry number saw a record number of people buying RVs and hitting the road. And then during 2021 and 2022, campgrounds were literally bursting at the seams. And we can't even tell you you like how hard it was to get into campgrounds especially around popular destinations like we talked about earlier the average shelf life of a full-time RVer is two to three years well where are we right now we're about three years post COVID and many full-time RVers have hit that shelf life of two to three years of being full-time on the road and we never before have seen so many RVs for sale and the RV industry as a whole is down. Now we know this because we spoke this summer with several of our contacts in the RV industry that are in Elkhart and they were telling us about layoffs at companies reduced work weeks, and even week-long closures at many of the RV-related industries in Elkhart. Now, the good news is this. If you're looking for a deal on a used RV, now is a great time to pick up a used RV and a lot of even really cool renovated RVs that are up for sale right now at a great price. So if you're ready to jump into this full-time RV lifestyle and you're not one of these RVers that maybe you've hit that place where you're ready to slow down for a little bit, now a great time to do that. And RV life has brought us so much. And we have been blessed to have the opportunity to see so many places, meet some of the best people, make new connections. We've had the chance to be contestants on the first ever season of RV Unplugged. And just so you guys know, we have no plans of quitting RV life. It just looks different for us now versus how it used to look. And we actually feel like we're enjoying RV living more now. And we've become really even more grateful glampers to be able to kind of have this ebb and flow to RV living where we're able to come back to our home-based vacation rental, take a little bit of a break, regroup, and go back out again. So I'm gonna leave a video right up here about how and why you should have an exit strategy before you just sell it all and go full-time. If we don't see you out on the road or around the campground, We'll see you in the next video. Woo! All right, we got to take it. Nailed a it. Well.